Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art chip, and today we are going to be painting Henry Fontaine Latour's Pansies in Flower Pots. This is a reproduction of a famous floral from a wonderful master painter. Um, and I'm excited about sharing this with you today step by step because you actually can create this for yourself at home. And looking back at old paintings can not only be a great way for new artists to learn skills, but also to create a lot of beauty in your home and really kind of brings some of that fabulous sense of the museum in there. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He's going to help me with this fabulous lesson. Now, everything's going to be broken down step by step. I'm going to explain the techniques, the color mixes, everything you need to know. The website has a traceable. So if you're like, I don't even want to draw flower pots, <laughs> right? <laughs> if you're like, None of it. That's okay. That's perfectly okay. And we provide that for you there, though I am going to break everything down about it. Um, this is really fun to do reproductions and that's what you call it. Like, so what you've done is you've done a hand painted reproduction. If you do Van Gogh or you paint a Monet, that's what you're doing is you're recreating these famous paintings. And I really love doing this, but I also love how looking at the way another artist, especially great artists solve problems, helps us learn to solve problems in our modern painting practice. And even though I'm using acrylic and Henri would have used oils, um, there's still a lot to learn here, though what's really nice is I don't have to wait for the painting to dry so I can paint this in a much faster sitting <laughs> and have it be done. Are you ready, babe? Let's be small and All go right. over the materials. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so we're on a 9 by 12 surface today. I have a lot of colors out because I just wanted to have lots of options and freedom. Thalo blue, ultramarine blue, thalo green, yellow ochre. You can use yellow oxide if you like. Cad yellow, burnt sienna. Cad Red Medium, Quinacridone Magenta, Deoxazine Purple, Mars Black, and in the center is Titanium White. And I'm going to pull that Titanium White closer to me because I always use more than I think. Do you have a ruler next to you by chance? Hmm? Do you have a ruler next to you? Mm, yeah. Okay, in a minute, I want to borrow that. Okay, I see where it's at. Okay, leave it there. I have okay. an interesting thing I want to check. I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> just like, you know, we're in our studio. If you get asked a random question like, do you have a ruler and you don't know what it is, you're like, Rut row, George. <laughs> You know what's happening? Um, hmm. First step. Step one. Now, all these steps are going to be time stamped so that when you come back later, if you're painting along and you're taking longer than I'm taking, which is completely reasonable, you can find your spot again really easily. And uh, that's a very nice feature. Plus, it matches the mini books that we write up that come out 7 to 14 days after that. What's a mini book? That is written out instructions with step-by-step -step photographs that match this lesson. And sometimes that can really help you... Um, get this kind of painting out like a bigger painting and everything just seeing it in those little micro sections we all learn really differently and that is a great way to go now the first step best step easiest step guess what what's that is just paint whole canvas dark brown oh I've... Well, i'm gonna get a big brush okay this is a nice big big brush and i think i'm even gonna just direct to canvas paint it today this is always fun you don't have to do it like this you can use your paint on the palette So this is a very interesting thing. If you have a 22 inch monitor, <laughs> this is almost one for one exactly on the screen, nine by 12. Oh, really? Yeah. That's why I was like, I wonder. I it's like, it's this very, is very weird. So it, it doesn't need to be painted neatly brown. We're just going to paint it all brown with our burnt sienna. Uh, you don't need to put your paint out that way. It's just a fun thing to do. And it makes a fun time lapse. <laughs> When we do time lapses, we've got some important time lapses coming out. Um, this uh, Thursday, you're going to see a time lapse peak of the upcoming big landscape painting on Saturday. The big landscape is still coming, but that just gives you an idea of what's involved. It's a nice way to peak. Plus, it's a relaxing way to watch a painting come together. Maybe put that on and put yourself to bed at night. You never know. And then I've got some time lapses of the face that I just did coming up, but we're still doing the lesson. And I think the elephant too, don't we? Just some chill stuff being painted in you'll like. I got distracted by color correction. We have those browns that I have to make. I have to look at them. And they're like, oh, they're so like it. it this is the, the, the place where the green reflection of the background makes such a difference between color matching between left and right camera. You don't know. Yeah. It's like my vex. Now what you saw me do there was I misted my canvas. Sometimes when I'm painting out a big area, 
if I use a mister, it can help me get that painting out. I'm gonna paint my little reference iPad here too. That's really all it is. Now it's not perfect though. I smoothed it out. I have a nice surface. I have a nice basis. Definitely rinse that brush out. You don't want paint to dry on your brush, but it's okay that it's streaky, that there's brush strokes. We have lots of layers to do. So this first layer is creating what's called a ground. That's a depth to the painting. And that's a thing that you can do right now as a beginner today to get a better result. I'm going to dry this with my hairdryer. Yep. And John is going to put up the next step. Wow. I will wait until we are done drying because one of the interesting things oh no one of the interesting things about uh, drying is that it will change the sheen of the paint um, and it will make it go from this real shiny to uh, uh, to this matte and it will actually change the amount of light it reflects to and see how it gets kind of magic as it happens right before our eyes there. Um, that wasn't me playing with the camera. That was just how it changes when you dry uh, the the paint. And again, don't worry about it being streaky. That's going to be okay. It actually adds to the nature of this kind of background. But the big thing here is to make sure you thoroughly dry it, which is why you see her so carefully going through all of this. Because if you don't, the next layer will lift up when you start to paint. That's called underbinding. And so she's good. That's why she's touching it is to make sure that uh, it, it nothing is sticky or tacky as she's drying. Oh, I love how you narrate all the awareness that I do. Oh, I feel like I feel like a wildlife nature. And there, the odd shepherd drinks from oh her my preserve. Gosh. Do you know what I'd like to do sometime? Tell me if you guys would like this. I would like to do a painting salad. I don't talk, <laughs> and you narrate it like it's a wildlife painting. It would be funny. It just would you guys watch that? That would be really funny to me. <laughs> have to, we have to, like, when is the next, uh, we could do it, uh, well, see, we, we do so much in April. Yeah, we can't do an April Fool's. We have, when's the next? I can't do any April Fool's paintings because that's the first day of acrylic April. And you cannot joke with people who are about to start a 30-day <laughs> no, painting no, program. No. Is it was a, I liked acrylic April, but I didn't think about the challenges of that. Like you cannot mess with people who are about to start painting every day. <laughs> I could commit to that every leap year. <laughs> Whatever leap year day is, that's the day we'll do it. Now I'm going to kind of sketch in some just general stuff, just so I know the placement of everything. And I'm going to use this really cool tool. This is a Dritz chalk tool. Um, this is a Taylor's chalk tool. It's really just like the chalk you use on a chalkboard, but it comes in this handy dandy mechanical tool. You don't have to use this. You could just use chalkboard chalk. So if you see these and it's a good price, grab one. They're really wonderful. Great tool to have as an artist, but not super required. And all I'm going to do is kind of just measure out placement. So if I think about where objects are on my, on my surface, I'm going to make a little angled line over here. And it kind of angles towards the left. You know, I'm going to come here and kind of work that out. There's a little bit of a pot implied there. And then maybe there's another little pot, right? It's kind of worked out here. I thought it was originally one pot, but then as I looked very closely at what the artist did, I was like, oh, that's like three pots. And this is sort of an implied little basket, but we barely really see it here. So many leaves and stuff. So really, we just have to imply that in. And we know that the flowers will take up about this much mass. See how I'm just making a little line there to kind of do the math. Now, this is the stage you would transfer your traceable on to the surface, or you could do it in the next step because we're just doing the background. So you can get them in now or next step. Either is fine. But what I, the reason I might put it now is so that you can see how much space it's taking up. And that way you aren't uh, messed up. Now I drew one pot in, but I'm kind of observing and seeing that it is. Yeah, I'm gonna, I would also like to narrate here mm -hmm. that I oftentimes see that sometimes you, because cinnamon is working in a different process of than you guys may be at home, like she'll she'll want to draw out where in the background she wants things even though she may paint over that and then re or because she'll already memorize where that stuff is yeah. but you can redo that layer again later another reason why tracing and transferring is not cheating in art because we have to often paint things out that we put on we're just trying to know where objects are in relationship on our canvas you guys do a lot more actual free handing than you think you do now i'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna and my yellow ochre together 
I might even grab a smidge of black. And I'm going to come here and start to dry brush out. This is a number 20 Raphael Artony brush. I really, really like this brush quite a lot. Um, and it's a hog bristle, which gives me nice rough kind of texture. And I'm going to just bring that out. I don't have a lot of water on my brush. And even when I do get water on it, I tend to kind of brush it off a little bit brush it off right a little black a little more yellow so this corner I want to be a little more yellow and a little bit lighter than my left corner which is going to be pretty deep and dark now I can go into my flowers a little bit here and that's what John's talking about I just need to know where things are going to be on the surface so I'm not painting the whole background that I'm going to just paint right over. Now I'll grab a little bit of my black and red and they're very loosely mixed. See how it is on my brush? I haven't integrated them. And I'm going to brush down across my cross and then watch this. We're going to get a little white on here. Gosh, so little. This is a very dark background. It is. A lot of reproduction paintings, you'll find that there's a very dark background. You know, if you look at it, though, these paintings tend to look really good in the type of lighting. Coming across here with a little of my yellow ochre. And then maybe going down, I'm creating that sort of woven look. Now, the wonderful thing here is over on this side, it gets quite dark even beyond what John was saying. So that's black and brown together. I'm going to, it's almost like how I lighten it. kind of come in deep here. Man, that just goes dark. Yeah, it is dark. Let's come into where our flowers are. And this is what I mean, like you could put it in on the next one if you want to. You just want to kind of know where objects are going to be taking up space. Okay, just a lot more brown here. It's so dark here, I don't have to worry about the brush directionality as well. It doesn't have to have such a, a kind of woven and obvious pattern. There, I can get them both to lift Now this up a is fun. Bit. From here, I'm going to come in with just a lot of my burnt sienna. I'm going to come across at an angle. Say so I came in at the pot kind of went in on an angle off. It's You don't really see it. It's very light in there. I might even grab a little yellow ochre in there and a little cad yellow. Just making sure we see that. Back into the black to enforce that line. And this dark, dark background. Oh, dark, dark backgrounds. They're a trip, aren't they? Dry brushing it through here. Dry brushing means I don't have a lot of paint on the brush. I don't have a lot of water on the brush. Another reason why doing an underpainting can be such a great start when you do an acrylic ground and you're doing kind of a sketchy background like this, the background really comes through and helps you. Now I'm gonna come in here with my dark color and I'm going to brush this out so it's kind of on that inside of that pot because that's going to be so dark there. And also kind of dark through here. But more dry brush. See how we're just kind of dusting it? Not as dark as in that corner. We got leaves and things that are going to come over the top so we don't really have to worry about that as much. I get a little white in here. Get some. What'd you do? Did you end the stream? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> no, what I did was uh, I pushed a button down. that made everything just go uh, a little weird. So just a little sorry. weird there? Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta. I was over here trying to adjust for. Uh, a different camera and it 
pasted a value of one camera to all the other cameras, which uh -oh. made them all kind of go. <laughs> like you're a little bright right now. I gotta fix that in a second. But <laughs> oh, <it's> okay. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. So I'm gonna pull a little of the red down in here. You know, this is going to be a little bit behind the flowers and leaves, and that's okay. We just want to make sure that we've got some depth. I'm going to dry all this, right? Now you can dry this and put your detail part of the traceable in next, right? So you know exactly where everything is. If you need that kind of anchoring, that is not a problem. So, yeah, sorry about that. I was a little distracted there. I was trying to um, make all the, the, because that, man, so this particular color brown has this tendency to reflect the green that we use in the green screen different at different tilt angles. So really about nothing I can do will make one camera perfectly match the other camera when I switch the camera. So I always have to compensate one a little bit more for green than the other, which then really is evident in this particular. In what one? In this, in, in burnt sienna, burnt sienna yeah. just says, "Here's where you're screwing up in color correction today." <laughs> it does. Challenges of filming a painting instead of just painting. Now I'm grabbing a smaller hog brush. Oh, and um, uh, that's because I'm going to be painting pots here. Let's put up a step. Did you put up? Yeah, step? Did, is that, was that the last one you were using? Was it natural or synthetic? Natural hog bristle. Okay, just hog that's awesome. bristle. And and if you uh, can't get hog bristle or prefer not to paint with anything that comes from animals, what you'll want is a synthetic hog bristle, and they make those now. So you can get that. Another good alternative is synthetic mongoose. Actually, there is only synthetic mongoose because it's illegal to use mongoose. Um, but it has a similar sort of rough texture, those synthetic fibers. So there's there's options out there now if you don't want to use this. But but do know no animal is killed for making brushes. This is just a byproduct of the industry that's already happening. If that's important or you wanted to know that, now you know. Did we step? We're going to paint our pots. So I'm going to take my cad yellow and my yellow ochre together kind of mixing a little halfway point here. And I'm gonna come on this pot, on the edge here, it's pretty yellow. I'm going to just brush that out. Kind of get that on there, right? And then a little more white here. So you see how that creates that edge of that pot? You can get into your brown. I'm grabbing a little white in my little brown. Let's grab a little brown right here and come back across. Just a little bit of brown back across. Get back into my burnt sienna. That color John just said was so easy to color balance with. Okay. <laughs> and just continue to sort of brush that in. Right. So now we have this little pot area kind of delineated. I'm going to do an interesting thing. I'm going to take my cad red and my cad yellow together. And this creates kind of an orange. And I'm going to add a little of my brown into that orange. Doesn't that make a nice color? And then I'm going to take my white into that orange and brown. And just brush. Now notice that when I brush across, I've got a kind of curve to that stroke, don't I? Right, got a little curve, and then we're going to do a little more white and maybe grab a little more of the yellow here. Kind of 
kind of leaving an opening a little bit of that dark there. Have a little red into that. Come from this side. I'm going to wipe off my brush on my towel. I'm going to go ahead and get a little black into my brown. Brush in a little of that shadow that I might have right here. They're very interested in your light touch control. So one of the nice things about painting on a stretch canvas over painting on a board or a pad is this gives you a little bit of kinetic information about how much pressure you're putting from your body through your arm through your brush into the canvas. And that allows me to keep very, very light brush pressure. I'm going to get a little more brown into this. If you feel like you've got too much any color paint, you can always come back and offload it. I'm going to add a little red into this right here. And I'm using kind of crisscrossing little brush strokes. Talk a little bit about that shadow that's here. Now I've got leaves coming down, so a lot of the top of this pot I don't even have to worry about. Oh, goodness. Did that ever happen to you where like a bunch of paint gets yeah. hidden on your brush? Goes. So I'm going to take that over to my brown. I'm wiping off on the paper towel and into my brown and I will blend that in. So sometimes if I'm not watching, I can pick up some paint that I don't want to pick up. But it's okay. I can come right back and kind of work that in. Now I do want to get some more dark. Kind of shade in this ellipse where I know I'm going to have plants sort of showing. And get a little more yellow into that mix over here. A little white. Then take some white into that little brown area. Sneak it over into my yellow. I love pots because they're actually so much more colorful than anybody thinks. Yeah. Doing pretty good. So we've got a little shadow here for the way the pots are working together. And we're going to define that a little more once we have our little leaves there, but we have the beginnings of knowing where that is. I'm taking a lighter amount and just dry brushing it over. Just dry brushing that in. Okay, that's the pots. That's the basis of the pots that we have to get. Let's get in some of the basis of our basket. I don't even think we need to change brush. Very similar colors, and we're going to play a lot of this with value. And these pots will really come together uh, quite a lot more as we add the flowers and everything in, and then we create a reason for the shadow. Because we'll do some like real detailed shadowing here as these little leaves come over and cast a shadow, but this just lets us start it. You want a new step for this? New step. We don't need to dry. Here we go. What to do? Step four. Let's continue more. So I'm going to take, uh, again, my cad red over to my cad yellow, as you do. Kind of working out an orange. And I'm going to add some more burnt sienna to my palette because I'm using a lot of this because there's a lot of it in this original painting, right? There's a lot of this color. And the reason you'd see a lot of these kind of muted natural colors uh, in pigments is keep in mind that um, in paint until recently, um, 
prices were about the color, right? And certain colors are more inexpensive. Uh, and so if you ever go to a museum, you notice there's a lot of siennas and ochres and um, umbers and kinds of things and, and, and coals. It's because those were inexpensive colors to produce. It's not that the artists would not, were they alive today, have gotten into all these other great colors. It's just, you know, they had a budget. So at least that's something we all know we had in common with each other. I'm adding a little more yellow to it and a little white. And I'm going to come here and on the corner of my brush, imply a bit of weave right there. So it's a brush stroke down and a brush stroke in. And do a couple down like that. few down this is just very hinted at guys we barely see it because it's in shadow so we're just implying a little bit of that weave we don't need to have all of it it's not necessary to have every little bit of it And we have lots of little um, leaves that are going to be coming down. I'm going to add a little dark shadow to some of those little bends so that there's some contrast. Let's brush that out here. A little bit of a weave down. This is just implying just the corner. Okay, you're not trying to get everything in. You're just implying a little bit. So one of the things that you will start to realize when you do reproductions of paintings is one that value is super important in art in that also um, you can do a lot with less and that's that's a very important thing to know is that you can do a lot with much less I'm going to come in with a little bit of my black paint here kind of really create that little corner there keep it forming here I will come back later and glaze it out not important to do it right now See how it's almost like a wash with the black paint there? It's just got water on the brush. I'm just kind of glazing some things out and making them more muted. So we're just seeing a small amount of what's here, even before we get to do all the fun part, which is, let's be honest, the flowers, right? It's what we're pretty excited to do. It's what I'm excited to do. I'm very excited to do the flowers today. <laughs> okay, let's do a step and dry the surface. And I feel like my coffee needs a reheat, babe. Okay, we'll dry that first. How are you guys doing? Let's take a deep breath together. <sighs> it's easy to hold tension and breath when we're painting. <sighs> we don't have to be perfect painters we don't have to make the perfect painting we just have to perfectly enjoy the painting that we're doing today it's about having fun so remember to breathe remember to keep things fun let's dry yeah so just well i'll be a little chill and move into the best part of the painting which is going to be all the little flowers of the painting which is you know kind of the the main show although if you were to interview the pot the pot would be like look i hold this whole thing together y'all you just oh you're you're overlook me a little bit and there's some truth to that sometimes we might overlook the pot a little bit but in this case i think we did a pretty good job of representing them and the earth that they hold together but without getting you know too deep into that philosophical hole 
because you know it's gracious i'm just <laughs> dropping everything on the floor aren't that's I? right i'm getting philosophical about earth and holden devices are you yep but look we're on to the fifth step Excellent. So step five. Now we get to do a slightly brighter painting here. And the reason that we get to do that is one, that we have the pigments available to us as modern artists. Two, we have to always remember that sometimes paintings that we see in the museum have uh, had a lot of patina or wear and tear or fade over time. So we actually get a little bit of leeway as artists to uh, brighten things up a bit, which can be pretty nice in our paintings. Do you heat my coffee, babe? Okay, I'm going to use a filbert. Filbert is a rounded brush. This is a number six filbert. You could use a number eight by the Simply Simmons. It's a good brush company for a low price point. I'm going to grab a little bit of my dioxazine purple like you do and mix it with my cad red. This is one of my very favorite mixes in the world. Just just generally, I love mixing diox with cad red. Creates some very unique colors. Now let's come here, maybe a little bit above the basket. And if you think this is the halfway point of our canvas, let's come up a little bit above halfway. I may even have to go pure purple at first to be seeing it. And we'll come back with a little bit. And we're going to do a little bit of a curved brush stroke. Thank you, babe. Oh, you're so good. I don't even know how you got there. I've decided to make John's life miserable by doing lots of dark painting. <laughs> and then we're going to do another bit of a curved brush stroke. We're putting in our pansy faces a little bit first. Uh, and that's just so that we can get a nice placement. Also, some of these need to have a white area underneath them. And some of them have to have a dark area. So it's nice to start getting in these areas first. Now, this kind of comes together into a heart. And then I'm going to do a little curve here, even though I know I'm putting in white faces. We're going to curve in another little rounded petal here for that pansy face. That's wonderful. And then again, a little darker coming at the bottom. So just that little basis of that crazy shape. And it's just important to get the shape in. We'll come back and get some of our white in in a little bit. Now let's say just a little bit above this is the next one. I think I want a little more purple in that mix. Also lets us kind of get a sense of the size of the pansies. If you did the traceable, this part is particularly easy because you don't really got to worry about And I'll be coming back kind of creating a little white face in here. I'm just right now scaling out the size. I like painting pansies. They're very happy flowers. I'm going to go a little more red on this one. It's kind of tucked behind his little friend. We don't necessarily see the skirt, but we can paint it down because we're going to put leaves in front of it. I've got a few more of my dark pansies. I've got a lovely one right here. He's a little smaller than his friends. And then I've got a nice little purple one up here. And this one I actually kind of can change a little bit up on. And the reason is because it's a different kind of purple. So I'm going to take, believe it or not, my quinacridone magenta and my ultramarine blue. And that creates kind of a more of a lilac-y color. I'm going to get a smidge of white into it. And we're going to come... Here over, I know I've got a little flower I want to bring up into this space, so we're going to come right here. If you think this is the halfway point of the canvas, it's just a little bit above halfway. The 
This is a little bit of a frilly pansy. And it will make the nice skirt down below. That's a great, great little focus. I like that quite a lot. And on the next ones, I'm going to do an interesting thing. I'm going to take a little bit of my cad yellow. And my cad red and maybe a smidge of white. And come right here. Just still using this brush. When I need to get details, I curve it on the edge. See how I'm working the edge here? And I'm curving the stroke. I'm letting the brush stroke create sort of the shape of the flower. Let's come down and do the little skirt. Because for whatever reason, it's a little side. Bits are there. And then there's a nice little kind of bright one facing this way. Which we will brighten up into white in a minute. We're just starting this one. A little shorter one there. I'm going to weirdly just get right into that here. We're going to say this one's tucked in. Let's come here and pop in a little white. This one is really sort of at the corner, so I'll go ahead and curve this. Almost like a like a heart there, but we have we know where it is now, don't we? Um, I'm gonna do some yellow, but I'm gonna mix some white into it because yellow can be so transparent. I'm gonna come right here. We're shaping just out that. We're just putting that one in. All right. It looks crazy at this stage. It won't stay crazy looking, I promise. I'm going to come here and get a little bit of my white. And I'm going to come up here. Handle up. And I'm going to start the little bit of the frilled, not yet coming out sort of pansy. And then it's got a little bit of a friend here. And go right into my red and purple, which we will darken later. And go right there. It's really all you need. Now you know where your pansies are. Pretty easy to put in the green. So we're going to call this a step, dry it, come back, put in our leaves. And then quicker than you might think, come back and put in our pansy details and how they're going to go from little weird spots on the canvas to gorgeous flowers is going to really delight you in every way. Yeah, this is a uh, these, these really come together quite quite quickly here, and like she says, they're quite delightful. So, thank you guys for joining us. Um, to appreciate it on you know the random Tuesday afternoon to be painting some flowers with some folks, it's just lovely. Um, if you haven't had a chance to join us in the live, um, please do. There's a whole lot of um, wonderful folks that come out and join us. Uh, Boop, 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 boop. Charge. If you have a chance, do huh? join us. Just do join us in the live if you have a chance. If you do. And if you're here on replay, I'm so happy to have you. So this is a weird stage. It's a stage where you at home are going to be like, my flowers are crazy. They're crazy at the stage. Be okay with that. It's totally normal. They're, they're having some growing pains. And, and that's okay. Sometimes our paintings have growing pains. Don't be worried about that. You've got to complete. That's your only job is to finish. Does that make sense? All right, we're going to start putting in some wonderful leaves. Now, my basis for that is I'm going to take a bit of my burnt sienna over to my phthalo green. This is just my favorite. And I'm going to start to kind of paint around this area and sort of fill up with this deep and phthalo green between the flowers. One of the big tricks is, is that... 
we really see these leaves based on their um, highlights. And so getting that basis of dark green that they pop up from will really help us. I might bring this down a little bit. I want it quite dark though. Not too far up here. So where I come to the edge of this, even though I'm not doing the leaves, I am going to do an irregular pattern. Again, we're leaving marks of where we're placing our flowers. We're not, we're not really actually painting our flowers yet. This just let us know where they are as we do these darker things. It also will help us keep the flowers brighter. It's okay to come to the edge of this pot just a little bit and create uh, an irregular edge a bit because we have so many like leaves coming down. That's okay. You paint over some of your flowers, don't worry about it. Don't be worried about that. We know we're going to come over the edge with a bunch of leaves here, so we're not concerned there. And actually, we don't even want this to necessarily be all the way dry by the time we start putting in our detail leaves, our highlight leaves, because the green will pick up into those highlights beautifully. Let's put some of this down a little bit low. So we have this dark green value of mush. Now what we're going to do is bring a little more brown over to our green and let's get some cad yellow into that. See how that is? Yeah. So it's a lighter value, but it's not very bright. Let's come out here to this outer edge. Paint a little kind of curve little leaf coming off here. Maybe another little one there. In the dark space, you can add just little bits of highlight, but it will keep it quite dark still. Come down and adding just a little bit of a little leaf here. Another one here. They're just kind of really through there. And you can see now where our shadow starts to make sense when the leaves start to come into play. Just painting in our little leaf shapes there, just implying them in. It's very loose. Sometimes when greenery is dense, we get a little mentally involved in all the little leaves that our eyes can really see instead of looking at the value and recognizing a lot of it is really just seeing the highlights and filling in the blanks with our mind. Kind of painting in a little leaf there. See, I kind of curve those little strokes and kind of create that little shape. Little implied leaves. Still, still building up on the highlights. Little yellow. Burnt sienna. Kind of 
putting a more detailed leaf there. As we come here, we're just capturing the tops of different little leaves. We're not worried about each individual one, just that there's highlights. Kind of like the basket. And these little messes then become like the little knots and centers, which is super fun. A little leaf down there, kind of tucking out that way. A little brown, a little green, a little yellow. Bring some of those down there. I'm kind of tucking around that leaf. Not as much showing there, little hints. Let's grab that. Let's tuck some implied leaves. Implication is everything. <laughs> We're going to gossip that there's some leaves in our paintings. <laughs> 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 just imply <laughs> okay now for the next part I do think I oh I might actually also at this stage go ahead and give myself this stem and this is just uh, this wonderful brush is a texture around it's a number four and I rather like it bring down a little bit of the beginning of a stem and add those little crinkly leaves at the top of it. It's just the start. We will highlight it later, but right now we got to get that in. Let's dry, come back, and do the highlights on the leaves. Hmm. So, yeah, drying, drying here is really important because it'll, it'll, as you, as you add the next layers of highlights, you want them to be thoroughly dry so they layer in properly and do that kind of stuff, you know. So, sorry, add that. I had a little cough there before I uh, got to the mic, so still getting my uh, voice sort of back. But thank you uh, again for joining us. I was just saying earlier, it's really nice to have everybody here on a random Tuesday afternoon. I really like chatting with everybody, and it's probably one of the more fun things to see you guys doing that. Yeah. So I love seeing step. their work. I'm going to grab a number four round. We're going to do some detail work here. I'm going to get this wet a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and get back to my base green, which is my burnt sienna and my thalo green. And I'm going to, now that this is dry, maybe add kind of a second little leaf that's coming out there. <coughs> Let's bring a little yellow, cad yellow, over to this green. It makes quite a brighter color. This is much brighter. And I'm going to just shape that leaf in. And here, I might even grab a little bit of my yellow with my green in it so it's like super light and get some white into it. And add some of these just different highlights coming out. Might even get some brown and yellow into that one here. Kind of tipping that one off. I think I got a little crazy with that, but I don't care. <laughs> See my brush right here? Just very mixy mix in the paint. Get a little bit of the lighter color. Sometimes see how we're making little short, little tiny lines? Mm -hmm. 
I like to just work through just detailing out some of these, right? I'm giving some details and some highlights to some of what's happening. I'm going to come back and add some little brown and green to that just to make that more dimensional. And come into my light yellow and remember the light yellow green was our green from down here with a lot more yellow in it and a little bit of white, right? And you can even get some brown into it to neutralize that saturation of the green. See how we're just capturing little bits. I'm going to come here and Is there a tool to determine the value, Jennifer G? Jennifer G, there is a tool to determine value. It's fantastic too. So what it is, is it's an acetate, a sheer acetate with a little grid on it. Um, and I'll probably actually have it in my store and you can look through your screen and see your value in the painting. The other trick is take a picture with your phone, drop the color. All right, make it a black and white. You ever done that where you take the, the, the saturation of it out and you, and you take the color out just to see it as a black and white? That's another way to see the value. So there's a couple ways. There's the old timey cool acetate tool, which I really do love because it helps train your eye. But also there's your phone. And I'm gonna wanna get a little bit like Kind of a little highlight on that stem. See how we did that? Mm -hmm. And then I can even get into some white. And highlight more. Peek a little bit out of behind a flower. I can bring some of my color into my yellow ochre. Add some white to that. And back into the green. It's nice to have several greens out that you can get and work through. It lets you do a lot of uh, really fun detailing work very fast. Like a little brighter area right there. So on these, like the leaves are a little bit in shadow, we do want to highlight them, but we don't want them so highlighted that they're all we see. And back into that. Paint a little detail leaf here and there, you know, and then you capture some highlights. And just grabbed a little more yellow. I don't mind if it goes into my yellow ochre and I grab some white. And add some little pops of highlight out here and there. Not everywhere, just here and there. And 
There we go. Look at that. Let's get back from our leaves and see how our fun leaves are looking. Pretty fun stuff. Okay. Uh, in the next step, I think I want to come back in and talk about my shadows a little bit and kind of look at how that's being expressed. And then I can come back in and kind of like make those pots work hmm. a you little bit in relationship to leaves now. You need to dry it or you think we're ready to just go out? I think I want to dry. Yeah, just dry real quick. Just dry real quick. Yeah, just give it a quick dry. That always helps between the steps so that, uh, you know, you don't drag any paint or accidentally bump anything, smear anything uh, as you're going in and doing the, the the next layer. So it's always good just to give it a little dry uh, that way you don't accidentally smooge. Um, and also, is an interesting thing, if you do make a mistake and you've dried that previous layer, it's much easier to do a little correction because sometimes the uncured paint will be movable or liftable with while it's still there, so. Uh, just some thoughts on drying paint. But. Do, 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 do. There's your Back next step. to my hog bristle brush. All right, so this is the number 18. It's just a little smaller than the 20. I am gonna go ahead and get a little of my black out and a little of my burnt sienna, and maybe even a little of my cad red. I'm going to wipe it off on a paper towel so I have just a dusting of color. And I'm going to go ahead and come here and sort of talk a little bit about these shadows. Now, like maybe that one is a little darker, a little more black. See how we're sort of glazing these little values? A little bit of the brown and orange that we have here. kind of enriching that color scheme. A little more yellow and white. It's kind of saying that there's a bit of a highlight right there, right? There's a bit of one right there. Back into our pot color. And then into under the leaf shadow. And let's just go around those leaves and just make sure that they have a dark shadow, right? So that's looking like a little more dynamic there. And then I'm gonna come in here and do some of my basket, which is my burnt sienna and my yellow ochre and cad yellow. And just little hints of basket. Maybe I even get into the red and purple over here. That was fun. I'm glad I did that. Oh, I like that a lot. Just kind of implying that there a little more. All right. I'm going to dapple that light a little bit around that shadow. I'm tapping up and down on my brush. So now we're done. Mm -hmm. Kind of creates a, it leaves it there, but it, it kind of creates a softening effect that I like. 
That's very, very good. All right. Step dry. Step dry. Yeah. Just head. Definitely dry between those steps. That way, you, if you you'll need to, you can make little amendments. Little fixes as you go. Let's pansy up, shall we? We're going to love this. This will be great. So we're going to come down here. And I'm going to grab a little bit of my white and maybe some of my yellow. Might even let it be in that orange yellow that I had. I'm going to make little strokes with my number four round. might actually bring a little yellow over here so I have a little more to add some little touches of bright yellow to that just because that'll be really really nice just a little bit in that inside face now we've got another little guy up here all right so let's get that going Little yellow, little white. Mm. Come here with a little bit there. I'm going to grab some just yellow on my brush and kind of pull that in back into my white. Okay. Now while I'm here, just a little bit into what will be that purple face. <laughs> Let's get a little bit of our purple here into that white. That'll be fun. So I've just added my yellow. It's interesting. I've just added my yellow and white into that wonderful mixed purple that I did. Got some yellow and white again. Curve that around. This one has a little break in its little face, so think about that. Coming back with some more detailing here. Okay, let's come up to this one. I'm going to definitely take this white and yellow kind of over to that violet that I had from earlier. Kind of create those two little layers of petal there. A little down, a little bit of it up. Kind of creating that little curving. We know we're going to have a dark center in there. I'm just adding the light highlight where I need it. 
right into this little violet right here. That's going to be super fun. And I've got white on my brush. Same kind of little butterfly wing here. I grab just a little bit of yellow and white. Just a little bit right there. So we're just starting the pansy face. You know, we're just kind of getting into it right now. It's the beginning of the pansy face. Now this one is great because it has a nice sort of little outer lip that we can come back and put in. So I'm going to just do my little patterning. I'm going to come back and define that even a little more. This time I'm going to get a little more over into my blue and white. It's kind of crazy, but we're going to do that. A little bit of a curl over petal here. So all I need to do is paint that little bit right there. Just grabbing a little bit of yellow. And almost like a heart shape right here. Okay. smidge of my uh, cad red just a smidge I can even get some of my docks purple and kind of cad red right now. Even start to paint that little kind of heart in the center and a little dark in that. A little bit there. All right, so now we have that run of them. And we're starting to see the pansies when we look back at this from a distance. We can see these pansies coming in. They do really come in very quickly. We're going to dry this and we're going to make these flowers just our favorite flowers. That totally makes sense. Yeah, trying to fill in everybody on the news of the store. And so, yeah, long, complicated answer is that every day is a new technical hurdle and, um, Patrons, you check your newsletter. We're going to have uh, some soft opening of the store. We're going to open up some of the cool internal prod, you know, stuff that we've got for sale. Make sure the store is working before we uh, open it up to the general public. See, ha, ha, ha. All of our patrons get to test and find our bugs, as I said in chat. So uh, we appreciate you patrons helping us out. Um, and that really is just so that we can make sure it's uh, we, we get everything worked out. And we do have some thank you stuff for our patrons in there as well. So, uh, and you guys will take a take a little interest news on that um the uh the patronage is really really easy to be a member of go over and check out the artsherpa.com forward slash patron and uh there's information there about it uh there was a good question about finding reference and um because this is a famous painting um i gave the full name of the artist there and the painting was there but also the um I have a pretty good high res because it's in the public domain um, and that's on the website that you can grab but you can also just find this paint this painting on the public domain to do for yourself so and and he's got a lot more and if you like doing these my mom does reproduction paintings of old, what she calls old dead guys <laughs> old dead guys all the time so if this is fun to you you can go check that out um, we've got a few more we've got a Manet and then another Van Gogh before the end of the month so we're kind of really getting into it. Now I'm going to take my 
the ox purple and my cad red together because I just love that combo of these two colors. I'm going to mix those together. And I'm going to come here in the center of this flower right here. And I'm going to make little brush strokes painting that dark little face, the little pansy face. It's right there. And then we'll say that there's a little bit of a curl there. One we can barely see here. And one coming there. Come here and paint the top of this little guy, his little bit. And then there's a little bit of a face here. Just kind of work that in. Now on his little face, I might even get some magenta onto this. And so I'm doing a little bit of white. create a little personality in that little part of that purple because we can have that let's grab this is the quin magenta and the ultramarine blue in white and I can come in and add little touches there it's really fun of just just a little more see how we're doing a little of the Quinacridone magenta, ultramarine blue, titanium white. Little brush strokes because this is a frilled and wrinkled pansy. Get into the quin here. I can get a little bit of my blue and white. And if you want a pop of color, you can take just a little bit of your thalo blue. See how we're doing? And just, man, just a touch, man. Just barely. And add just a little to this outside edge, too, that just peeks out. And then I'll get back into my purple. Grabbing my cad red and docks purple. If you need to make it even darker, you can come right here and get it even darker. Okay, we're really thinking about that interior. A little white and yellow. A little bit of that in that center, that's really nice. This is a fun one right here. Making sure I'm not carrying any extra water in my brush. Just really grab some titanium white. Even get a little yellow ochre. I'm gonna grab, pick up a little yellow here. See how we're coming right there and picking up a little yellow. And kind of really shape out that flower. Docks purple. <laughs> I 
come back with that little yellow and kind of work that in. I like to come back, you know, with a little white every once in a while. Pop that up. A little yellow in the center. Come here and continue to like play with this face. Go play with our flowers. Grab that little magenta there. A little heavier on the cad red on that one. Still dark, you know. Still come in with like Doc's purple on that center. Come back and hit that with the highlight when it's a little drier. I can rinse out. Can touch the center with a little bit of white. Let's move up to here, shall we? All right, a little more cad red in the docks and cad red mix. And making little short marks for that frill. And that frill. I'm just letting that little flower just kind of peek out there because it wants to. Yeah. Rinsing out often. And here with just a little box, and then we can flick back into the pansy. Come on that outer edge. Kind of add a little pop in that center just to pop that little flower. <sighs> I think I want to come back and add that pop to the center of this one as well, just because it will look really nice there. A 
of adding little touches of color. Just keep playing with those little touches of color. All right, so let's look at this from overhead. <laughs> See how it comes together really fast? It really does. It comes so together fast. really fast. It's just doable. I have, uh, if you like pansies, I have another big giant, like a close-up of just a single pansy face that's like an hourglass from Acrylic April last year. And it's really great. People got great results out of it. So if you're enjoying painting pansies, or as I know many of you, uh, pansies are special and symbolic um, for you, for people in your family, or for people that you love. And so you can always come in and, and really get that. Now I'm going to take a little bit of this cad red in the dog's purple, and I'm going to add a little cad yellow. Just kind of create that little, see that pop? It's a very particular pop, I think. All right, I have here titanium white, ultramarine blue, quinacridone, magenta, and sometimes we get a little bit of yellow into it. We play with that. I can even get a little phthalo blue if I want. And we'll wipe off, and get some titanium white. Little purple that comes into there. Get some yellow. Can I put a little yellow center there? That looks pretty good. That's starting to be a little flower. It's starting to have its little thoughts about itself. Get a little bit of our cad red and our dox purple. Put a little bit of our dark little pansy face back into these. Popped a little blue on that outer edge there and that really helps that one just come together, doesn't it? Ah, Bella's going to run for self-care. Congrats on self-care. I think that's always a good idea. I do a lot of it, and I love when you guys participate in self-care. We're going to come right here to this flower. Let's go ahead and get this wonderful sort of mix over here that I did. The thing is, I just want it to be light enough. A little bit of yellow and white. Kind of in that center there, because we like those centers. Really gonna just be in this dark pansy. Kind of tapping that out. And then again, you know, you just work these little faces and we'll flick that back out into the face. Add a little white to that just so we can see it. A 
Yeah, so we've got a nice little face there, don't we? Nice little pansy face. A little yellow over. Look how colorful that is. That's so colorful. So pretty. So pretty. So pretty. Now, I think I'm going to do this one and then this one here. I'm going to come in at first and kind of add the pops of dark that we have here that I really like. Kind of in that little detail. So that's pretty nice. Grab a little bit of my yellow. Kind of really let that one be a little bit brighter. And this has a little yellow in it, but it's very white. Have a little dance there. <laughs> there we go, and that little one there. So that's all bright and cheerful. We just have one more to go. What? I know. So fun. So okay. easy. Gonna pull this out. Pansies are one of those flowers that look complicated, but are just a joy to paint. Just, just genuinely a joy to paint. I'm going to go ahead and get a little white here. And I'm going to come back to this because this is dry now. And I want to even brighten this one up. See how we're doing? Sometimes you'll be looking at your pansies and like, you could use a little glow up. Sometimes you got to glow up your pansy. And that's okay to do. Just glow it up. So come right here. Little white, little yellow. Oh, we're just doing great. Look at that. So cheerful. Little white, little yellow. We like him. Kind of curving that in there like they do. Oh my goodness. Do we just love this. Dark little face. Paint that little brightness in that center. Just love our little bright pansy centers, don't we? Our little happy pansy moments. Really neat. You just got to be like, you know, how happy is your pansy? And these are fun flowers. Very friendly flowers, too. Friendly flowers, friendly to paint, friendly to paint. I'm adding little touches here and there, just giving little, you just glow them up. Glow up, just give them glow ups where they need a glow up. It's okay to glow them up. I'm 
maybe not as much that, but it's just not a problem I can come back with. Look at that go. We're done. Guys, we're done. Wow. This was our fun today. Wasn't it fun? It was great. Super fun. And now that you've done this, you can go do like every other one that's out there. You can practice painting pansies. You could also just grab some potted pansies at the plant store and just mm. stick them in a window and paint what you see there. That's perfectly okay. Um, Andy says, y'all are the bomb. Thanks for encouragement. I've been helped more than you know. I'm so glad you have. Oh, thank you. I am so glad you have. I get a lot of requests for pansies. I don't paint them as often as I get requested, but I do get requested a lot for pansies because more than any other flower, even more than roses, what I found is that so many of you associate this with a grandmother or mother, um, a dear friend, an important life moment. And you guys ask a lot to be able to paint pansies to mark those moments. And I think that that's exactly what painting is for, right? It's to mark those moments. It's to be present in those things. So I do highly recommend it. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to grab a little bit of my CAD red, but with a purple. So it's not pure CAD on a number one monogram liner. I'm going to just sign the center. Now, can you sign a reproduction? Yes, you can. You just have to use your own name, not the artist's name. Uh, so reproductions of like old master's paintings. Uh, you would just sign your own name and then, you know, if somebody asked you what it was, it is a hand painted reproduction of, and then you say the artist that it is. Uh, a lot of times you guys ask me, can you sell, uh, my art? And for my original designs, I, I do got, allow you guys to sell in private sale. And I have, you know, if you're doing it in a gallery or a online setting, I ask that you uh, do attribution, which is, you know, inspired by the design of the art Sherpa. If you're teaching, you need a labs license. But here's something you might not know. You don't have to, you, I don't, you don't have to give me any credit for this one. <laughs> if you want to say I learned how to paint it from the art you can, but you would credit the original artist. You would give attribution and you don't have to ask my permission to sell. And it's completely legal, uh, especially uh, for Henri, Henri here, Latour, mm -hmm. uh, for you to sell. I think in most, always check your country's law, but I think in most countries, he's so deep into the public domain that you absolutely could do reproduction, sell or gift. And you don't have to worry about that. You can do these for charities. Um, Oh, thank you, Celtic Peasant. I really appreciate that. So this is something to know that you can do. You don't got to ask me about it, this one at all. <laughs> Just do cards, whatever you want to do. Have a blast. Um, be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>